In this Bourdain tutorial, we're diving into conditionals. If a given condition is met, then you can run certain types of actions. And if a condition is not met, you can run other types of actions or no actions at all. Let me show you one of the most common examples with lead qualifications that salespeople need to do inside Google Sheets. Here I have a list of dummy contacts. And for me as a salesperson, I only want to reach out to people who are actually likely to buy. That's why I have this qualified column. The way I qualify people is I go to the website, I check it out. If I like it, I will say qualified. If I don't, I will say disqualified. Here I've created some options that are predefined, qualified, disqualified. You can do it by clicking over here in data and data validation to create these options. So now when I qualify a person, I want to send a message to the appropriate channel inside Slack. Here I have Slack open and specifically because we're doing the demo, I want to send the messages to my Slack bot over there. So let's go back to our browser and let's take a look at the first contact. I'm going to qualify the first contact. I'm going to qualify the second contact, the third contact I'm going to disqualify. And here I have the Bourdain extension already installed and I have this specific automation running. I'm going to show you what happened in the backend in just a second. Here we have our contacts. We have John Smith with all of the information right there. We have Sarah uh, Johnson and that's pretty much it. So let's go back to compare. Yes, Sarah Johnson and John, they were qualified and Michael didn't trickle through our filter. Let me show you how this specific automation was built. I'm going to open up Bardeen and I'm going to open it in the builder to see what's inside. Here we have three actions. We have when a row is added or changed inside the Google Sheet. We have a conditional block and then we have a branch, yes. And then inside that branch, we have send Slack message action. So let's go one by one so I can explain you how this automation works. This first action is a trigger action. It runs when a new row is added inside this Google Sheet or when something changes inside an existing spreadsheet row. For example, I can add a new contact just like this, or I can make a change to a given spreadsheet row. For example, change one of the variables. It can be company or it can be any other column over here, such as qualified column. So technically this automation was already triggered twice. But if we go to our Slack messages, nothing happened here. And that's because we have a conditional block that is going to evaluate what type of changes do we actually want to trigger the other actions on. Let's open up Bardeen one more time and take a look at the conditional statement. So the conditional statement that we have over here says the following. Hey, we're going to check a variable. Let's uh, go ahead and just build it from scratch. We're going to evaluate a variable that comes from the trigger action. Let's pick that. And then I'm going to evaluate data that comes from that spreadsheet row. So this action outputs a spreadsheet row. Here, we're going to evaluate a specific cell inside that spreadsheet row. Specifically, I'm interested in qualified. So this is the qualified column. This is called the evaluation operator. So let's take a look at the options that we have available over here. Uh, so qualified can be empty. And if it is empty, then the message will be sent or not empty. It can contain something or it can not contain a given word. It can start with a keyword or it can end with something. And then there are case sensitive options as well. So in my case, I want to check the qualified cell inside the given spreadsheet row. And I want to check if it contains a keyword qualified. Qualified, just like this. Let's do a very quick recap of all of the arguments that we've just filled out. The first one is the value to check. So in a given spreadsheet row, we're going to be checking a given cell inside this column. Then we're going to say, hey, does this contain a certain keyword? If it's a longer statement, for example, you can say something like this lead is qualified. And this automation will still run because it contains the qualified keyword that we have here in argument number three. And finally, we have argument number four to fill out. It says, when shall each branch be invoked? I know it sounds a tiny bit confusing, but I promise you it's a lot simpler than you might think. So here we are evaluating a spreadsheet row and this specific action will output only one spreadsheet row and run the automation uh, once. But if we had a different type of action, for example, find all emails, and we had instead of one spreadsheet row, one object, we had 10 or 100 different 
different objects. What should happen if that's the case, if a given action outputs uh, multiple different objects? Then they need to be processed here somehow. And the way it's going to be processed is going to be determined by this uh, specific argument. We have three options here run yes if at least one item matches the condition, meaning that if one email, for example, out of 100 has a matching condition, then everything is going to go into the yes branch. The second option that we have over here says, hey, everything, every single email out of 100 needs to have this matching condition, and only then you can send them through to the yes branch. And finally, this is the option we're going to be using for this specific example. We're going to be evaluating every email and if the given email matches the condition, it's going to go to the yes branch. And if the email number two, for example, does not match that condition, we're going to send it to the other branch. And by the way, speaking of email automations with conditionals, I've just created a new awesome video that uses artificial intelligence to automatically classify your new emails that come in and if they contain something like a newsletter or a cold outreach message, then they will skip your inbox entirely so that you do not need to waste time. Make sure to check it out by clicking over here if it's out already. Otherwise, this is a great reason to subscribe to this channel. But I digress. Let's build an automation entirely from scratch with conditionals. And this use case is absolutely mind blowing. So when the new email arrives, I'm going to check if it has invoice inside it. And if it does, I'm going to get that email, add it to my spreadsheet so that at the end of the month, when I need to do my reporting, well, I have all of the information already there. So no searching, no copy pasting, all the data is there. Ready? Let's get to it. We are inside my inbox in Gmail, and here's an example of the type of email that I want to get edited into a Google Sheet. It is from Twitter, and it has the keyword invoice. Clearly, it's an invoice. And what I want to do is I want to create a new Google Sheet that will have that, uh, that email edit as a spreadsheet row. So I'm going to type sheets new to create a new spreadsheet over here. And let's go ahead and call it my invoices. Let's create some columns such as sender. So this is the email sender, the body of the email, the amount. And I also want to get the link to this email. Finally, let's freeze the first row so it looks pretty. Okay, so we have a spreadsheet and we have an email as an example. We want ideally to add not only just this email, but also to add the amount. For that, I'm going to try to use artificial intelligence. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Bardeen and create a new automation. And here I'm going to find Gmail action over here. If you do not have it installed, well, there is this plus icon that you can click on to browse through all of the available options, including Gmail. So here I have Gmail selected. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say, hey, when I receive an email, this is going to be our trigger action. And here we have filters that are already built in with a specific uh, subject line, for example, from a given sender. I do not want that because I'm going to be using conditionals for this. And I'm going to add a new conditional block just like this. And we're going to pick a value to check. I'm going to check the body of this email. And I'm going to see if the body of the email, if all of the text inside that email contains a keyword and my keyword is invoice. So this is the keyword and this last option doesn't really matter for this specific automation. Now we have two branches, yes and no. If it does contain invoice, then I want to add a row into that spreadsheet. But before we do that, I want to add the AI action that will try to find the specific amount inside that body of the email so that I don't even need to do any post-processing later on. So here I have open AI my favorite integration, to be honest. And in order for me to find the amount, I'm going to pick this action that says, get answers about a paragraph. Here's what this means. We're going to provide some text, which is the paragraph, I guess. Uh, and then for the paragraph, we're going to use body. And the question is, what is the amount in the invoice? You can also add some context to the model so that it works a little bit better. I can say something like, this is an invoice sent by email, output the amount only. And finally, we get to pick the OpenAI model. For me, I want to use GPT-4 because it's the most reliable, although this task is very easy. And I'm going to add a new action. It's going to be a Google Sheets action. And we're going to add a new row to that Google Sheet. So first, let's type in the name of the Google Sheet, my invoices. 
And on the right side, we have all of the columns. So let's just map the data coming from other actions, such as this uh, Gmail action, to the Google Sheet cells. So here for the sender, I'm going to use from. So this is going to be an email. Body of the email is also going to come from that trigger action. So this is the body of the email. We have our timestamp, we have the amount. The amount is going to be coming from the open the AI action, just like this. And finally, I want to be able to open that email in a separate tab. So I'm going to pick this perma link uh, over there. Okay, let me click on done. Uh, one action that I have forgotten is getting the timestamp. So I'm going to edit in between. So let's do exactly this. I'm going to find the action. It's called get current time, just like this. And then let's go back to our timestamp and select that get current time action formatted in UTC, just like this. I'm going to click on done. I'm going to click on done one more time and call this invoice Gmail to Sheets. Hit save. Enable your automation, very important. It's not going to run if you don't. Now let's go back to our Twitter invoice. And I want to trigger this automation manually to make sure that it runs no problem. For that, I'm going to forward this email to myself, just like this, and hit send. Okay, so the email has been sent. The trigger action with Gmail that we use in the automation might take around 60 seconds to run. So you can go ahead and open up Bardeen and here click on show activity and here you'll have all of the invocations of this automation you can also click on this drop down to get some additional information uh, it's my invoices sheet which we have open over here and there we have our email that was added over here let me just reformat it resize the row to this height and all of the information is already there let's see what OpenAI has returned it has returned eight pounds which is exactly the amount in that invoice how exciting is this this is this is a massive time saver and this is the conditional tutorial if you want to check out those two automations that i showed you in this video you can find them in the description below and if you want to learn a little bit more about how to use ai automations make sure to check out this video next where i walk you through all of the open ai actions and beyond see you there